and welcome back to the She Shoots podcast, Women Empowering Women in the Shooting Community, Season 2, Episode 22, Shooting Straight to the Olympics. Today's episode will be covering the theme of shooting sports. My name is Regina ruiz Ordonez. I'm from the Canadian University Shooting Federation. And joining me today are Casey Gavinchuk from Lady Guns and Kelly Melansom from Maple State Project, Sunfire Radio, and CCFR Women's Program. Unfortunately, we're missing our fourth person, Deneen, but she'll be back on a regular time in December. I promise that. And now I would like to start by thanking our sponsors. Uh, Cabela's Cavada Outdoor Fund, positively shaping the future of the outdoors. Every cent donated by rounding up a checkout goes towards helping Canadian organizations just like ours. Savage Arms, home to the Stevens single shot rifles and shotguns. Breda, family owned and operated since 1526. Vortex, the best in optics, and Canada First Ammo. If you have any questions or comments throughout the show, make sure to leave them in the chat box below. Doing so will automatically enter you in the draw for today's giveaways. Today we have a Shishuts t-shirt, CSA prize pack, and a Canada First Ammo prize pack. So since Cindy is not here today, I will be reading the bio for our guest today. Yay! <laughs> so joining us today, we have Shannon Westlake, she began shooting at the age of 12 after joining Army Cadets. She started shooting air rifle and small bore, competed at a local, provincial, and national cadet championships. In 2001 and 2002, Shannon had the opportunity to represent Canada after earning a spot in the cadet national rifle team in the Imperial Meeting Full Bore matches held in Bisley, England. Hope I pronounced that properly. Mm -hmm. Shannon loved shooting so much that she purchased her first full bore rifle not long after leaving the cadet program. She competed at the Dominion of Canada Rifle Association national oh. matches on several occasions, winning oh. short range and mid range matches. She also oh. the Canada in Bisley, England at the NRA Imperial matches and was a member of the Canadian team at two world long range oh. championships in Brisbane, Australia, and Perry, Ohio, USA. Even for full bore, during the winter, Shannon began shooting both competition small bore rifle and Olympic air rifle shooting. She has represented Canada in these disciplines at multiple CISM military championships, World Cups, and Pan American Games. In 2023, Shannon won the Canadian small bore prone championship for the second year in a row by breaking the Canadian record with a score of 628.4. She also won the Canadian Women's Air Rifle Championship and the Canadian Women's Three Position Championship. In October 2023, Shannon competed at her third Pan American Games where she won the bronze medal in the Women's Three Position Small Board event, earning Canada a quota a quota spot for the 2024 Paris Olympic Games. That Woo! is amazing. <laughs> oh my goodness, you've done so much. That's quite the resume that, and we're so excited to have you on, Shannon. Um, your name was mentioned in many circles and I said, we need to have you on. So we, we pulled some strings, we got in contact with a few people that you, our mutual friends of ours and we said um let's see if shannon can come and and join us so thank you for coming on tonight as well oh no problem i really am excited to be here even though this is definitely more nerve-wracking than uh, competing at uh, an international event for me so uh, thank you <laughs> it'll be fun <laughs> i think you'll be great uh yeah you've had some exciting times recently and you made time for us tonight too. So thank you so much for doing that. I know that you are, you're trying to balance your competition. Uh, you just got back from the Pan American games. And again, you're trying to balance your home life and work and everything. And you made time for us tonight. So again, thank you so much for coming on. Why don't you, uh, I, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? How did you get so interested in shooting? Like, I know that you joined cadets. Why did you join cadets? And, and, how did you get down that road? I, you know, it's funny. I grew up in this little town, uh, Keswick, Ontario. We didn't have a lot of money. Um, 
and so uh, and I was really interested in joining the military when I when I got older. So I I had met somebody, a friend of mine, uh, just randomly, and she told me about the cadet program. So I joined, and you know I was more interested in the drill and the outdoor things. And then all of a sudden I heard about the shooting team. And uh, at and any time somebody asked me about the shooting sports and how I got involved, I never want to um, say anything other than the, the program itself, because that, that's exactly where the passion started. And I never want to forget my roots. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it really was me putting my mind to getting onto that team. And it wasn't really about my natural ability or anything, because I certainly have met way more people with that Um I was told that I would never make the shooting team there. So I I was pretty driven <laughs> to, to, uh, to work at it and, uh, and make the teams. Uh, so I was, uh, that's where I really um, started to like it, but then was around people that really wanted to do well. So that's where I kind of engaged in learning about, the skills and the technique and and striving to be better uh, both like technically and mentally as well but um, it was uh, after um, leaving the cadet program that I realized I really wanted to continue shooting so okay. um, I did I, I mentioned this before but I <laughs> I did use money that I had saved for university to buy my first first I gun. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I did continue to go to university. I have my degrees. I, I, I did finish and I, I worked really hard uh, several jobs while I was in university so I could keep, but I, I was really, I really wanted to keep shooting and full bore mm-hmm. was really where my heart was uh, okay. at the time. Uh, so uh, that's where, where um, I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to keep training for full board during the winter months. And so I, I was in the military, I am in the military and, um, and uh, I was taking a course from, with somebody who told me about the SISM team. So it's, that was oh, like yes. a, yeah. part of the military shooting team. And, and uh, I thought, well, if I can keep shooting during the winter, you know, for yeah. SISM, then that's a great way to, to train for full board. But you have to shoot three position in order to keep that up. So I was like, all right, I'll shoot kneeling and standing if it means that I can keep shooting during the winter. And then it it kind of took over to the point where I have stopped shooting full bore and said, I will I will get back to that um, in in the, the future because uh, I really want to dedicate time to this uh, this Olympic style shooting yeah um stuff so that's that's just essentially where i'm at now <laughs> that's really exciting to see the progression that you've made and the decision i think any from my perspective as a female anytime that anybody tells me well you won't make the team or you will not you're not good enough or it's a motivating factor um for me anyways <laughs> was that something that was a motivating factor for you Oh, absolutely. I've had that multiple times. I recall somebody coming up to me during one of the full bo- the national matches and saying, oh, I don't see your name on the leaderboard. Why haven't you won anything? And that's, that just like lit a fire under me. And I, I won multiple matches right after that. I'll show you. <laughs> yeah, like, that's exactly yeah. it. So have, uh, you con- have you continuously shot since you were 12? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, other than, you know, uh, taking some time off after I left the mm-hmm. cadet program to, to, uh, to buy my own rifle, uh, mm-hmm. and then learn about, you know, the costs associated with the, some <laughs> of the, the, yeah, making, like making your own ammo or buying it or, or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. I, uh, I def yeah, I, I've, yeah, I've pretty much shot all, all the time. And so it doesn't really matter what it is. It could be, and now it's small bore and air rifle as a priority, but yeah. um, certainly knowing that I'll continue to shoot un- until I really can't anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, why don't we talk about that just a little bit? You're talking about the expense of it, and but 
small bore, an air rifle, it, it's not as expensive as full bore. We know that. Um, and reloading. So tell us, you talked about positional shooting. So three p positions. Tell yes. us a little bit about that specifically. So, yeah, that, that's pretty, it can be pretty intense and, mm -hmm. and hard on the body. Uh, we, we, the kneeling position in particular is pretty challenging. It's not a natural position. Mm -hmm. So it actually takes quite a bit of time to uh, develop that, that ability to sit in on your heel for, you know, a, an hour at a time. I mean, there were times when I've, I'm training and everything from my belly button down has fallen asleep and I don't even know how I'm going to get back up. But I like with the, yeah, going back to your question about the costs associated with it. I mean, it's time that's developing that, mm -hmm. that uh, skill set, um, the muscle memory, all of the techniques that are involved uh, in using that, but uh, procuring the equipment. Yeah, it does get, fairly expensive in the beginning but you tend to use this equipment for quite a long time so yep. um for the kneeling and the prone positions um those are called sling positions mm -hmm. so um i i have a sling that i use for both of those positions that just helps stabilize the position um i also use uh, shooting pants and a shooting jacket uh, mm -hmm. that are kind of like canvas materials that um help provide uh, a lot um kind of stability because it has some rubber grip on the elbows and on the knees to help keep mm -hmm. my elbow in in the spot on my knee when i'm in the kneeling position or grip onto the mat when i'm in the prone position which is laying on your belly um and uh and really to help my back and provide back support in the standing position just because uh, in the standing position, it's not, it's not like the hunting or, um, or, or shotgun stances where it's very dynamic in a sense. It, we're torquing our, our body, uh, using our, our muscles, uh, trying to reduce using muscles. Muscles, it's skeletal. Yeah. Yeah. We're using our, our, um, yeah, our, our, yeah, our skeletal system and turning our, 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 our lumbar spine and, and utilizing our, our, our elbow onto our hip bone and trying to line everything up. So it's quite um, hard on the back and on the body mm -hmm. um, so that the jacket and, and that provides some support. I also have shooting boots uh, as well that are nice and flat on the, the soles, which are specific to the sport in order to maintain that nice flat surface to help mm -hmm. with balance since the standing position is so um, uh, unstable. It's not stable at all. Uh, yeah, at yeah, and it helps in the kneeling position as well, provide some ankle support mm -hmm. uh, because the kneeling position is quite uh, similar. It's it's like taking prone and standing and finding a balance between the, the mm -hmm. two. So sitting on the bottom, on the back of, the boot which is very flat helps just kind of stabilize the position uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah these are this is the same sort of equipment uh we previously had mary patrick on oh of course. right yes so yes. it's the same equipment that she uses when yeah. she was doing small bore as well or air rifle um but it it it's equipment that you need uh when you're at that higher level as so with three gun when you went when you went to the Pan American Games, which just took place, what disciplines were you shooting? Were you shooting the three position? I small only board? shot. I only shot three position small bore at the, this Pan Am Games. At the last yeah. Pan Am Games, I shot air rifle as well. Um, I'm not a strong air rifle shooter um, in comparison to people others internationally. Uh, it tends to be a younger person game uh, for, you know, people who are in their late teens to early 20s. And I'm no longer in my early 20s. <laughs> um, and, and with the limited time that we have as Canadian shooters to put towards our event, yeah. um, it's, it's much more, it, uh, it would be taking away from my ability to train in three position, which is my stronger event anyways. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it it was a it was an active decision on my part not to spend more time in three in in air rifle, um, 
because I wanted to really make a run for, um, you know, uh, at doing well at the Pan Am Games instead of mm-hmm. being neo- mediocre, really. In, okay. In well, <laughs> so when we're talking, let's go back just a little bit because I do want to follow up with the air rifle stuff. We, you were talking about the equipment for that you use for the three position. So mm-hmm. the um, the jacket that you have, the pants, the boots, etc. What type of rifle do you have specific for the the three position small board? Uh-huh. And then we'll I get love it. it. Yeah, I it's know. It, we love talking about guns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about all the other equipment stuff. I uh, yeah, this one here. I have um, a Walther KK five hundred as my okay. twenty two, and uh, it was. It's an amazing rifle. Like, and it loves to shoot. It shoots pretty much every single lot of ammunition that I've thrown at it. Well, um, when we're testing ammunition with um, with teammates and with other other guns uh side by side mine will take pretty much everything and shoot it all well while other people have you know yeah rifles are finicky yeah 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 Yeah. that they they'll shoot well so um you know what that that gun pretty much out of the case it comes with everything so Mm -hmm. uh as far as a high performance gun that actually came with the uh front sight rear sight a butt plate um a, a riser block for standing uh, a, um, a, a, a hand stop for kneeling and prone okay um so the only thing that i've really done to it uh, above and beyond is i got i have two more butt plates so i have one butt plate for each position which yeah. makes changeovers a lot faster especially yeah. considering that the finals there's such a short period of time between each position um, and I also changed the rear iris on there to have some color filters and, a, a, um, and I also have like a colored ring on the back. So it's like a red ring on the back. So when I put my head on the cheek piece, it's easier to tell if I'm looking through the, Doing the alignment. Yeah. yeah. So the rifle itself is fitted for you. So those butt plates specific to those positions so that you can have mm-hmm. the proper, I really flank the pole, et cetera. And it's easy to switch out. You were talking about the ammo. What works? What do you shoot competitively? What type of ammo? Um, uh, in the past, I've had, I've shot Ely, uh, yeah. but right now I'm shooting um, Center X. Actually, Lapua Center X. Uh, okay. it, it seems to shoot better than uh, Exact or even Minus Plus, which my pocketbook really appreciates. <laughs> so yes, <laughs> You're, yeah, yeah. So are you buying the ammo? You're not being. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is part of a Canadian shooter's life. You know, when you love, when you love something, you're going to take the time and invest the money into it. Um, So yeah, no, pretty much everything comes out of pocket. The, the ammo, the gun, the other equipment. Yeah. There is sponsorship. I know we can talk about that a little bit later, but what about the sling? What uh, what do you use for a sling setup? That's a cartoon sling that I use. Um, okay. And it's just a basic, simple sling. Like it doesn't have any fancy, like little minor tweaks on it. It's just, it's as basic as it comes. Okay. I throw, yeah, throw the sling swivel on and tighten it array and, or loosen it, whatever. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what distance are you shooting at? Is it 50 meters? Yeah, it's 50 meters for three positions. So, um, yeah, each each point one of a um, of a point is uh, like a millimeter. So, mm-hmm. like from ten ten point zero to ten point one would be a millimeter um, on the target. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, your groupings are pretty amazing. We should, <laughs> we should we should uh we should see if we can get some of your targets are you able to actually show us some of your targets um, um we can we can post them later i'm wondering okay i don't i don't know i don't usually <laughs> uh, you know i like so actually some of the questions that we get sometimes is does is the well the target obviously changes in between positions right like they do in biathlon because biathlon they have the the you know the the, the, the pie wow. plate for standing yeah. Which totally understandable when I used to do bias. I did a little bias on a little bit when I was a kid. And I like the big bias. <laughs> um, now, but for each position, the target is the same size. The 10 is the same size. 
in each position. So when you're looking at world, uh, those international scores where somebody shot a 596 out of 600, they're talking uh, the same size oh. bowl, uh, yeah. yeah, and hold. Uh, so my my groups in kneeling are are about the same as my groups in in prone, prone? now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that, yeah, you but that has come with a lot of time and effort and practice because uh, it does not come easy. <laughs> is is it specifically? Can you take you do and oops? Can you do another type of position, whether it's um, cross leg, cross leg or open leg position? Oh, okay, so um, I don't shoot anything other than kneeling. Um, like I do see people shooting kneeling without a kneeling roll so they'll actually like twist their foot and sit on their foot i don't know how they do it yeah i, I mean in 2018 i had a an injury to my ankle it was okay. obviously you don't get you do not get injured shooting you get injured doing something like doing another sport so i i tore three ligaments in my ankle playing volleyball um and i was told that i would never shoot kneeling again like don't even bother trying um so uh i would never even attempt to shoot without a kneeling roll underneath my ankle for support okay. uh so but there are people that literally just shoot on the side of their their foot mm -hmm. uh if they have the the flexibility that way okay yeah i've i've seen people i uh, i when i get down into the kneeling position i can i can do that and it adds more support because you're you you are sitting across the whole entire foot. You have a yeah. wider surface. Yeah. Okay. I thought I'd throw that in because um, the positions that we shoot, or sorry, the positions that we teach in our clinics, we add a variance to it, whether it's a cross-legged position or. Yeah. 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 And we have the, the rules that are specific to, you know, everything like the the sling cannot even really, you can't be touching um the rifle at all so you do need to have like some kind of clearance and yeah. same with um the pistol grip was usually what women have the issues with the pistol grip is not allowed to touch your jacket in any way so when i get my guns usually i have to uh, sand down the grip substantially so it's not okay. touching i'm curious about that why do you think that it's specifically women is it because of our oh uh, yeah body, body yeah. jack yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. I was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a that big of a problem compared to other people, but I, the, the, yeah, yeah, no, that's uh, that's it. Really, it's the, um, yeah. the yeah, our 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 shelf. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Biological. We're blessed with some stability. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk about air rifle then. So you were actually competing in air rifle as well and 10 meters, correct? Yes, 10 meters. Okay. Yeah, that, that that 10 is like the size of a pin. Yeah. Um, and that's only that's only standing um, mm -hmm. internationally and you shoot uh, 60 shots um, in a match, so. Uh, that one usually your foot starts to fall asleep before anything. <laughs> Is it timed? How much time do you have in that to fire off your 60 rounds? Yeah, so we have uh, 15 minutes for ciders. So okay. usually get called to the line um, for 10 minutes before your ciders start okay. uh, for preparation, just to set up your gear like your offhand stand um, and, and whatnot. And then uh, you get 15 minutes for ciders and then. Um, we get an hour and 15 for 60 shots in air rifle. Wow. Um, yeah. Air, air rifle is though, as far as, um, if you really want to put a lot of time and effort into something and, uh, it not be as expensive to get into air mm -hmm. rifle is the way to go because the guns are a good one is not as expensive as a good 22. Right. Um, right you can usually find them kind of secondhand uh, and, and ammunition is certainly much cheaper. So 
Mm -hmm. uh, and to be able to just hop into one position and just focus on one position is pretty nice. Uh, plus, I mean, if you get one that's shooting below 500 feet per second, you don't need a, a pal, no, right? Right. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so there's so the, benefits that way. Right. And the, you still your your equipment for your jacket, your pants, everything is the same as small. Yeah. Part. Yes, exactly. So okay. I don't have to go and buy duplicates of everything. Um, I'll tell you, though, I keep old suits to mm -hmm. train in uh, because they they don't have as well after years of use. Uh, they're not as as stable, so they don't mm -hmm. have as much support in them. They like mine, I can do flips in it if I really wanted to. I'm not going to, but uh, the, the so I train in my old suits. So that way I'm really focusing on technique uh, and I have to work harder to shoot good shots. Uh, and I, I keep my, uh, my good suits for, for competition. For competition. It's a really good tip. Yeah. It's you're concentrating on technique when you're doing your practice because practice mm -hmm. makes perfect, but perfect practice makes perfect shooting. Exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what is your setup for specifically for the air rifle? What do you have for equipment? Um, so I do have an LG, uh, it's a Walter again, uh, yeah. an LG 400. Um, I have, so I'm built like a T-Rex. Like I have these <laughs> short little arms and I have a really long neck. So, um, I often struggle in the standing position to reach the trigger because I also have like tiny stubby fingers. So I am never going to play the piano. Well, like I've just come to terms with my, my, uh, lack of ability to do some certain things right so um i have to like cut off some of the butt plates like the the rails right the um yep. in there in order to get it as short as possible mm -hmm. uh, so that way i can actually reach the trigger without using my giant muscles uh to get in there um and cause tension so mm -hmm. to try and um get it as short as possible is what i had had to, had to do in a note in both with my 22 and my air rifle right. um uh, right now i'm using an on shoots uh, i'm borrowing an on shoots uh, from um my uh, teammate uh, sharon bows she's a former olympian um, multiple olympian she she's lent me her uh, on shoots so that i can train with it um uh, just because i can reach the trigger a little bit easier on her air rifle than I can on mine. So, okay. um, but it's just uh, little things that, that yeah. help. <laughs> again, the air rifles are, you try to fit them specifically to you and the positions Absolutely. that you're going to be shooting in. Yeah. That's why you yeah. said the butt right. plate has to be changed out. Absolutely. Yeah. So I use, uh, and that those butt plates, we can't use a hook in air rifle. So those do, do look different. Mm -hmm. Um, and the weight distribution on the, on the rifle needs to be set up specifically for the individual, like the body mm -hmm. type, uh, uh, everything. So I did, Mary Patrick used the rifle that I'm using right now okay. for me and just the way that it was set up, uh, I noticed on the weekend that it was way too front, uh, heavy, heavy for me. Yeah. So I had to adjust some of the weights that way, um, the big difference between 22 and uh, the air rifle is that the air rifle is a lot lighter. Mm -hmm. um, but once you get the weight distribution set up for you, it's really nice to shoot. Like it can be a very like nice approach to the target and a great hold. But mm -hmm. once if without that balance point being right, it's not, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't go as smoothly. No. So, um, yeah. The rifles have to be configured for the individual shooter. Mm -hmm. so for you it's going to be different than as you said mary patrick yeah. um the configuration specifically but also the balance too mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. it's the same thing with your small bore yeah yeah okay can i ask you where you are practicing are you holy where... cow i'm yeah. all over the place so <laughs> i um during the the summer months uh, um so i have uh, a workshop and most of the time I spend uh, on my SCAT or dry firing. So the okay. SCAT shooting training system, I hook it up and I've got uh, five meters that I, I do this probably um, an hour, at least an hour a day. So 
Um, and so my days actually are pretty crazy. Uh, yeah. I wake up at five o'clock in the morning. I do my workout. Um, I do my meditation, which is about 10 minutes. And then I start work at seven. Uh, I come home after three o'clock to um, home. And then I take the dog for a walk. Uh, and then greet my son, uh, make lunches, go train for an hour, come back, make supper. Uh, and then spend time uh, reading, usually like mental training books with my son for okay. like a half an hour before going to bed. Uh, redo that whole routine the next day. Um, for live firing, I try to get out uh, a couple times a week. So during the summer, I'll get out as many times as possible because I go to the Pan Am range um, in Cookstown, Cookstown, which is about yeah. 20 minutes from my place. Okay, that's close. Um, yeah. And then um, during the winter or and then during the summer months, too, I like to go and train with other people um, that that do my sport, like the, because it's really nice to be able to to train with like minded people and people that have the same goals as you. So mm -hmm. I'll drive to Kitchener. I, I shoot at Twin City. They're fantastic, uh, mm. supportive of us. So we um, uh, that's about two hours from me. And um, I'm also a member of Pioneer Sportsman Club in, Pine in Kitchener, which is about, again, an hour and 45 minutes away from me. But they're also highly supportive. And we have yeah. a core group of people there that train together. So mm -hmm. um, it's worth the drive to be with people who are supportive who have the same yes, exactly. goals. But they also, if you train with people who have, a similar or even a higher level skill set it'll also bring you up as well that's what exactly. i found anyway <laughs> yeah for sure absolutely and it's so nice to be able to like bounce ideas off of one another um greg sitch and i are teammates and mm -hmm. we um i was had i was struggling last year with some motivation issues mm. so it it was his idea that we meet on Wednesday nights and we do a virtual session. So we have our coach uh, come in on a on video with us and we have our, our cameras pointed to our screen and we're, sh we're sharing our scat traces with him and we're able to work on things together and, and do things that we wouldn't do on our own. Mm. Um, and I found that that's made a huge difference for, for us. And for me in particular. Yeah, we, we've we had some people on the um, podcast that are part of the Shooting Federation. And we've talked about motivation and how we overcome barriers. And Chloe was one of them. Are you, do you work with Chloe at all? Oh, yes, I work yeah. with Chloe. Chloe is phenomenal at what she does. I'm, she? Yeah, I'm so yeah. lucky to work with her. Yeah. So we all, I think we all, it's something we all face is the, that motivation sometimes we just lose it especially if we've been training hard and then all of a sudden maybe we've had a setback or maybe your life gets in the way I think it's 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 how do I say this where it's good to hear that even our elite athletes those that are going to be going to the Olympics also face that too but there's ways around it absolutely and and so and my coach and I just had this talk the other day about um taking breaks because I sent in my training plan for next year and um, I only took a week and a half off after the Pan Am Games because um, I was itching to get back into it and I know that I have to work hard for next year um, and uh, I had a feeling that he would notice what I did in my training plan and it was I did not put a lot of breaks in there it was <laughs> and he he's we've talked like we're I'm going to forcefully take three weeks off during the Christmas holidays Good for you. um just to uh recover essentially and, and try and reduce the injury or yeah. you know help with that motivation mm -hmm. uh, piece because sometimes when you get that take that break it's easier to come back um mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah it is so um when I asked about where you're currently training, um, your training plan, your planning, your regiment, you've already talked about, you know, how hectic your days are because you're also you're somebody who works, you're a mom uh as well, and then you have to get in your practice so that you you can like you're 
you've got a spot in the 2024 Olympics. You have to practice for it. You've just talked about your training plan. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're, you're so, so busy. Um, how do you balance it? How do you, how are you balancing it? Um, I don't know. Sheer determination. Um, cause it, it's, it, it's about my, uh, I, I try and listen to my body too, right? Like I need to, um, if, if I'm not feeling right one day, I'll have to readjust that day and being flexible with everything that, that we're doing. So I have my plan set for the week and I plan on dry firing on, on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then going to the range on Saturday and Sunday. And maybe one of those days uh, it, it's not going to work. So I can see that coming and I'll readjust to, to try and get something in on Tuesday, let's say, and then take Friday off. So that way I can watch a movie with my family because uh, as much as um, athletes are the people that are, that sacrifice a lot. I think mm -hmm. it's my family that sacrifices the most because these are my oh, goals. Wow. They're not theirs. And mm -hmm. uh, something that athletes often struggle with that, <laughs> I've talked to Chloe about this on a number of occasions. Uh, it's it's a it's a struggle um, to think that your self worth is all in your sport, and that your family yeah. will not be proud of you if you don't do well. Mm -hmm. um, and I can say that when I won a medal at the Pan Am Games, I was surprised that my son was excited for me because he he I didn't think I thought he would brush it off because it doesn't doesn't matter. Um, I certainly know that if I came back last, my dog would be just as excited to see me um, than if I came in first, right? So yeah. <laughs> if it, it's uh, that's a struggling point for me is to um, yeah. kind of balance that that aspect of you know there's there's other people here that are sacrificing more than yeah. I am. Um, I'm really lucky to have them in my life though. So yeah, it sounds like your son is super proud of his mom though uh, yeah sometimes yeah <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it, it depends yes yes exactly uh, he rolls his eyes uh, at me so any math problem yeah. he questions my my ability to solve the math problem but most like I'm surrounded by geniuses so my husband has a math degree my father-in-law has a math degree and was a high school math teacher for years so when I'm come into, you know, the, the question mom's uh, mom has three degrees, but that doesn't mean that like, I'm going to like have anything to say because I don't have a math degree. <laughs> okay. He's so funny. <laughs> Rolls his eyes at me all the time. But you help him with his math homework. <laughs> oh, well, uh, yeah. yeah. Try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The new math. Um, why don't you talk? Why don't you talk to us a little bit about the Shooting Federation of Canada? How did you come to shoot for them? Because you are uh, representing Canada. Yeah, that's right. I started shooting SISM, and then I decided uh, to shoot SISM. One of our selection matches was to shoot the nationals. So mm -hmm. I lit I went from shooting um, three position at uh, my local club to signing up and registering to shoot at the nationals. Uh, and so part of that was becoming a member of the Shooting Federation of Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it really wasn't overly difficult. It was finding local matches. That was probably, uh, once once you get to know people and you introduce yourself to the people that, that compete in that, it's much easier to continue as then it's word of mouth, you know, what's happening, uh, other local matches or provincial matches or, or national matches that are popping up. Um, and then you can discuss with people about the selection process to get on the team and right. uh, understand all those little hula hoops. <laughs> so there is some questions about that. I know that people, we're going to come back and give people the opportunity to ask questions. They're asking, how did you get on the team? And, and ah. maybe, so you can, Let's 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 come yeah. back and, and and loop those people in. So I think Maria specifically has been asking questions about it. But I did want to talk to about talk to you again. You have such an extensive career with shooting, but your most recent Pan Am Games. Do you want to give us a little summary of of again how you did? Because 
I know that you've t you took home some medals. And what was it, what was it like? I, you know, all week I was very, very, um, well, le like the last several months I've been really working hard. Uh, yeah. men improving my mental game was the most challenge. Uh, it was the most, th the thing that I've been working on the most actually for mm -hmm. the last year. Um, because when you get to that level, everybody really has the same skill level. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you got to put aside the fact that you're competing against people who are full-time athletes and just yeah. go out and try and do your best. Now, I was uh, quite sick uh, on the day of my match. So oh. I didn't have my greatest match that day. Um, but I had a good enough match to get into the final. So I, I did shoot like my low average. Um, mm -hmm. And so that was good enough to get in the final, which made me happy. I, I, that was, you know, a goal. And uh, leading up to the, the Pan Am Games, I had been really focusing and training specifically in uh finals timings because they are very different uh in a match you get a block time of an hour and a half to shoot all three positions okay. you can change over to ciders whenever you want you can shoot as many ciders as you want before you go on score into the next position uh, as long as you do it all in an hour and a half in um and, and but in the finals you have very specific timings to get your shots off and to get good shots off and while reading the wind while reading the light conditions and to know that this is usually later on in the day when the wind conditions are at the height uh of you know their max and yeah and everything else that's going on around you the uh they highly encourage cheering at these events as well now uh music's playing and then of course you have the announcers who are telling you exactly what's going on Plus, they put screens immediately in front of you so you can see exactly where you are in your rankings. So right. they have computer screen and you know exactly, if you're looking at it, you know exactly where you are. Um, so you have five minutes to shoot uh, ciders, like to prep for preparation, to get into position and to get centered on the target, you have five minutes. And then for each five shot group in the kneeling position, there's three, okay. uh, you have three minutes and 20 seconds to shoot five shots, which is a lot of time unless all, you know, things are not going well. Yeah. Uh, then you have seven minutes to change over uh, between and uh, between uh, kneeling and uh, prone. So that's from everybody has to be in the exact same spot. So you're not allowed to start changing your gun over until they say start. Um, okay. You're not allowed to get up from position any or unhook your sling nothing so uh you go back because all of your stuff has to be in the bin and you have to change over your sights your butt plates everything and move your your stand put your pro mat down and then you have yeah so and then as soon as that seven minutes is up you have two minutes and 30 seconds to shoot five shots uh three series of five shots in the prone position mm -hmm. Um, during that time, I did notice that I was leading for a good chunk of it. Um, I didn't really care that much. I was just going through with emotions and, and this was my plan and I was shooting well. So I was, I was happy with it. Um, and I, I didn't actually shoot that great in prone in the final, but that's beside the point. Um, then, uh, after prone is over, same thing. You have to wait until they say start. You have nine minutes to change over from prone to standing. standing. So remove yeah. the mat, put all your stuff in the bin, change over, get in position and start ciders. And then there's two rounds of five shots and you have four minutes and 10 seconds to shoot uh, your five shot group, your five shot uh, series. Um, my balance was off that day. And I, you know, I, I did not use my time effectively. I, in my first series, I still had like over two minutes left um after I finished my finished my five shots but you know that's that's how it goes and and you learn from those things and you move yeah. on so and and so I took that time to actually do some folding exercises you're not allowed to dry fire um in in the finals so all you can do is just do some folding exercises um and then um after those two series are over that's when they get rid of seven and eight 
and they start single shots. So after every single single shot, then they get rid of somebody. Um, yeah. When they got to us, uh, my standing wasn't that great. So they, I didn't realize exactly where we were, but they said, uh, you, uh, this next shot will determine the Olympic quota spot. And uh, currently Westlake is only leading um, their girl from Puerto Rico by 0.1 of a point. So that's a millimeter at 50 meters. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. So <laughs> this is good. Um, so when they said um, load, I essentially told myself, just approach the, sh the target straight and take the shot on your first attempt. Uh, I know that my first attempt is typically my best attempt. So, okay. you know, don't overthink it and just enjoy the moment. Like, yeah. you know, no matter what happens, just know that you shot well today. So um, I took the shot and I'm pretty sure I broke it before the girl from Puerto Rico. And uh, I knew it was a good shot. So mm -hmm. I was very happy. But then I looked down at the screen and saw that it was a 10.9. So I was even more happy because I knew that there was no way that she could beat me. She, um, she couldn't even tie me like that. That was, it was a dead perfect 10.9. Um, I was, I was ecstatic. So all I did was, <laughs> was look back at my team with a big smile and they just erupted and, and cheered. So that was fantastic to be able wow. to share the moment with them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and so I, yeah, that's how, that's how that ended really. Um, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> that was congratulations i think there's a shot of you looking back and smiling that in was all it. the newspapers <laughs> and that was the moment that you realized that you secured a spot for the olympics so congratulations yeah. on that thank you so what does it mean for 2024 it means you're going to the olympics uh, well actually it means oh. that i i won an olympic quota spot for canada Right. So shooting is not like uh, boxing right. or anything like that. Um, yeah, you don't win it for yourself. So I still have to work hard for um, for to make sure that I earn that spot back. Um, some of the other internal things to make the 2024 team to Paris is that you have to be uh, announced and on the 2024 team. So I know that okay. that's part of some of the questions. Um, no. I you yeah, sorry. Yeah. Go no, go ahead with that because it is a little tricky too, especially with yeah. especially with shooting. Yeah. Yeah. Um and then other ISSF requirements as well are that you have to have competed in two championships right. uh leading up to it. So uh, you know, I've got that, the cat games and the, the Pan American games. Um and so because you, you have to compete at least two and you also have to have at least one QROG point, which is one qualifying point to um, uh, to be able to be eligible to shoot at those games. Um, so there's there's uh, there's things that need to fall into place. Right. Um, for 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 Canada to announce who takes that spot. Mm -hmm. uh, um yeah. So as far as making the team, um, it does change every year uh, how to make the team. Um, and it hasn't really been announced for next year's team how to okay. do that yet. So we there's there's like the identified team, there's the development team and there's the national team. Um, and all of the documentation is on the SFC website. Sometimes it's a little bit more challenging to um, um uh to get through all that documentation so uh, what we've had to do in the past is identify a match and um a match that meets certain parameters so there's uh there's at least 10 targets on the the firing line it uh if you're trying to make the identified team it doesn't have to be electronic targets but if you're trying to make the national team then it has to be on electronic targets mm -hmm. Uh, and then there needs to be, uh, you know, somebody who's qualified to run an ISSF match. So typically the ones that we have, we know which ones they are. So uh, the, yeah. the matches that they run in the States, like the U.S., they, they mm -hmm. tend to have all those ticks in the box. Um, 
And so you know that, you plan it out, say you need to submit a, a cut score form saying that you're going to use that match um, 30, a minimum of 30 days in advance. And you, and you have, uh, I think it's six opportunities. So you can pick six matches uh, throughout the year to um, that you're going to submit a score for and you submit that 30 days in advance. And then after you've done your match, you, um, you resubmit with the score and the link to where to find the score. Okay. Um, and uh, to make the national team uh, this year, it was a ranking um, amongst all of the athletes in, dis- in every discipline, like skeet, trap, um, pistol, rifle. Uh, air rifle and 3P, like they're all, um, you know, um, inter uh, mixed based on um, the uh, international score that is re- that they're looking for for you to make the national team. So mm-hmm. for my event uh, to make the national team, it was a 585. Um, and so then they would throw my score in there and divide it by that and you would get a percentage. So, and that's how they rank all of us. Um, okay. So there's, there's a bunch of stuff in there. So if you didn't identify one of your, your best events in advance and you didn't get to use it, that's, you know, that, that kind of sucks. It, it yeah, happened it does. to me. It happened oh, to me. No. So, you know, it, it, it it's okay. <laughs> I'm uh, like the the 2024 team hasn't been announced yet, but I'm pretty sure I'm 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 on the list. So. I'm open. <laughs> <laughs> well, I the the ranking list is actually open on the SFC site, okay. so you can go and actually look to see where everybody's ranked, uh, 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 like comparatively to each other. Um, so yeah. it it is transparent that way. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sounds complicated, but also. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. can be. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, looking forward to uh, next year. Okay. You did talk about your mental management, something that you've been working on, and you said that you've been reading books. Uh, can you tell us about those books and whatever other methods that you've been using to help with your mental management? Yes. So, I did mention that I, I do uh, my meditation every day. Uh, mm-hmm. I use uh, I use the Headspace app. I'm, okay. I'm uh, not... Uh, going to do that all on my own because it's really nice to have somebody help me out when I'm doing all the other things right so um they have the that app has a bunch of competition specific courses and Mm -hmm. you you do those follow along and it's just becomes part of your routine and it's a really nice uh um, part of your day really where you can just focus on you uh Mm. and really not do much um I just finished reading, um, uh, wow, uh, Terry Orlick. Um, oh, okay, yeah. Yes, uh, that one. Uh, my favorite, one of my favorites is uh, Grit um, by a woman. That's great. Uh, it, it's really all about um, developing grit. Um, I want to say Duckworth, but I can't remember. Maybe somebody can tell us in the chat. Maybe, okay. yeah. hey, see, can um, you look it up over? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that book I thought was fantastic. It's not a, a um, an overly challenging read. It's a it's a nice read, but it's I was reading it. It's talking about developing grit and people that you work with, working on developing your own grit. Um, there you go. Yeah, and then uh, also yeah, Angela Duckworth. Thank you, and then. Um, I also enjoy reading like other books that athletes have biographies like um, Andre Agassi. I yeah. probably say Butcher's uh, name. I'm really bad at no, that. You got uh, it. Open. Yeah. And uh, so those are, those are all the ones that I've kind of um, uh, look at because they're, they're all building towards the same kind of thing. There's, yeah, uh, but interesting and helpful at the same time. So. Okay. Um, I know that we're getting a little long, so I'm going to turn it over to Casey here in just a second, but can, um, you're a female shooter. What, what recommendations do you have for women who want to get involved in shooting, who want to start shooting? Because you had, you're a 12 year old 
you started there. So what recommendations do you have for anybody who's interested in getting into shooting? And then we'll talk about more at the elite level. Yeah, no problem. I, I, um, I've been on the range as one of the only female shooters. Uh, it happens a lot and I'm okay with it now because it, it, I enjoy it so much. And my favorite part is like, I don't know, beating people, I guess sometimes, <laughs> um, no, uh, the, the, um, the thing that I do suggest is to find if what you want to do. And, and that comes with trying some, like the Ontario Rifle Association has, um, intro days mm -hmm. or, um, you know, on the, um, uh, some of the clubs around here on, um, I can't remember what day it is. I should know these things. Uh, they have open shoots at the at their local club where people can come out and and um, and try different uh, events. And I would highly suggest just going out and trying it because you never know what you're what's going to stick. Um, and all even it doesn't matter if you're a woman or man. Everybody seems to be uh, on the same page when it comes to the shooting sports. Helpful. Yeah. And just there to um, enjoy the sport together, really. Um, yeah. What about what about people? So, yeah, you shoot a lot with with men. You do. You shoot same competitions with men, I, I believe. Correct. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. So men shoot the exact same. It used to be different. Yeah. Um, it used to be men shot three by forty and women shot three by twenty. Then they switched it. We all shot three by forty. Uh, when they removed um, prone out of the Olympics, uh, then it was just, we were all shot prone together. Yeah. There was no men's and women's prone. It was open. Um, Love flame filled. Yeah, exactly. And it's, yeah. it's the same in full bore. Like there was no men's and women's, yeah. you know, uh, whatever. So um, I'm fine with it. Cause we all have the same skill set. We all have the same look at it. Um, I mean, right now, if you look at the world records for women's shooting in, in air rifle and, and three position, I'm pretty sure that the women's scores are higher. They um, are. <laughs> <laughs> Funny so, enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, but on any, like, if we're all shooting shoulder to shoulder, um, we're in the same conditions, same, same uh, prep, same everything. So it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, I think it's good competition. So, okay, um, I do too. Yeah. So let's talk about how we as Canadians can help support you. Uh, how can we help support you as somebody who shoots um, for uh, who represents Canada? Uh, you've talked about the fact that you you buy your own ammo and you buy a lot of this your equipment as well. So how can we support you? I want everybody to come out and start shooting my events with me. I really do. I do. I want more people shooting Olympic style events. I think it's, it would be great for the sport, um, for shooting sports in general, uh, to, uh, for, for people to see what on a fantastic and open sport it is. I, I mean, I've been shooting for a while and, um, anybody can do it. I mean, I have seen tons of people with oodles of talent, talent come and go. Uh, but if you put the work uh, into it, then anybody can be a good shooter. Yep. I've also seen, and it's, it's the Paralympics as well. Um, uh, like the amount of work that they put into it. I'm so proud of our Paralympic shooters. Yeah. Um, and the fact that, you know what, they are skilled and they have the ability to shoot just as well as, as we do. Um, I've been on the range where with uh, a man who was a quadriplegic had a rifle set up um, for him so that he could blow into it and shoot. And he had somebody um, load for him and change his sights. So he told them what to change the sights to. Uh, but it uh, it was inclusive. And I, yeah. you know, anybody can do it now. Right. So mm -hmm. uh, unlike some other sports that are not as inclusive, I think it's uh, exactly adaptive. Uh, Adaptive yeah. shooting is fantastic. So on that note, we currently have some athletes who are, who are shooting out at, as part of the Panning Games. Starts on Friday. Yeah. yeah. Just so. went over. So good luck to them. 
Um, why don't, um, is there, I'm going to turn it over here to Casey. She, there's a bunch of people who've asked questions, but uh, is there anybody that you wanted to actually just give a little shout out to people who are maybe mentors or people that have supported you uh, during your shooting career? I would never want to do that because I would end up missing somebody that's really important because there are so many people. You you can't do it on your own. I've had so many uh, coaches, mentors, people who have just been there for me uh, that are still there for me that maybe I don't speak to very often because, well, as uh, in my predicament, you do not have any friends anymore unless you see me at the range. Like <laughs> that's my life. <laughs> so um, I, anybody, uh, even the people that I don't know who are my supporters, I'm really I'm happy uh, to have them. I, I, anybody who's willing to uh, be positive influence on shooting sports, I'm I'm they're my my heroes. So. <laughs> oh. Well, why don't we give a shout out to your son? Let's, oh yes, he's yeah. my favorite person in the whole wide world. Okay, yeah, and my husband, of course. So I can, yeah. can't forget him. So <laughs> okay, so let's turn it over to Casey. There's a lot of questions people have been asking, and Casey's been monitoring uh, our comments. So there are people who've asked some of those questions. So I've kind of steered away from those specific questions that um, that instead of during the podcast that um, that uh, there. Anyways, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. You. Thank you, Kelly. Um, so our first question is from Maria, and she's asking um, how someone can get into the Pan Am um, Games. So the first thing actually is to start performing um, or shooting high performance type of shooting. So getting your foot in the door to do that. Um, in order to get to the Pan Am Games, we actually have to earn quota spots at matches prior to. So uh, I won our Pan Am quota spot at the Championship of the Americas uh, last year. And um, the in order to get selected to go to the Championship of the Americas, uh, we needed to be on the, uh, the high, on the high performance team. So um, so first step is to start shooting a uh, high performance style, coming out to our matches and then, um, you know, learning the ropes and, and working with us to, to, uh, to get identified on the high performance team. And then from there we can work towards, you know, getting the quota spots for painting games and, and then going there. Cool. Um, okay. And a follow-up question to that is how someone can get on team Canada, especially for free position. Um, it's, uh, it's fairly similar. Um, we, yeah, it, it, starting to shoot three position, um, you know, uh, with slings, uh, one of the things, one of the events is sporting rifle that, um, has turned people over to three position shooting, which is essentially three position shooting without a sling. So, and, and, this, and, uh, not yeah. as high tech of a rifle. Um, but the other one too, uh, that, we don't do much in Canada, but it seems to be uh, somewhat popular in the U.S. is uh, just three position shooting with an air rifle as well um, to, to practice it and to see if it's something that you enjoy or something that you like before you invest in um, like mm-hmm. 22 and, and that range time. Um, yeah. If anybody's interested, uh, Slam Fire Radio, which is an excellent podcast, by the way, um, <laughs> If you want to listen to uh, some information about sporting rifles, we recently had uh, Jay Bazell on to talk about sporting rifles and how to get into it and taking it to the next level so we can transition into what Shin's doing currently. So go and listen to that episode. <laughs> I had to give myself a or give myself a selfless plug. Yeah. Shameless plug right there. <laughs> that that's that's it. Shameless. Oh well, no, I'm not shameless. <laughs> So the next question is also from Maria and it looks like um, what other sport sports or workouts do you cross train with? Um, So my workout regime is uh, more like a a four or five day split depending on, on it. So I'll do like an upper body and a lower body day is typically how that, that works with like a, um, a, a, active recovery sometimes that active recovery is listening to my body and telling it to sleep um the 
uh, but during the winter months, I do quite a bit of cross country skiing. So my my um, I got my son involved. I can't even say that he enjoyed it. I, it was because I forced him into it, really. Um, so while he's while he's doing his lesson, I go I go ski. Um, so that's part of my uh, my workout routine. Okay. Okay. All right. And the next one uh, is from Doug, and he was a little late to the podcast, so he just wanted to know uh, what you're shooting your three position competitions with. Oh, yes. I use a KK500-22, uh, so it's a single shot uh, uh, action, bolt action, and um, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all say that. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. Um, and then I think the last question we have is from 1AB, and... Um, Wanted to know how much has it cost you out of pocket to reach the level you're at? And do you seek sponsors outside of the shooting industry? Um, so the second part, no, I do not seek sponsorship. Um, I have had Canada, uh, Canada card in the past, which is uh, supports a little bit. Um, and I've had uh, Quest for Gold funding um, a little bit this, uh, over the years. So that has helped um, as much as, let me see. <laughs> I don't like talking about the money part because I mean, at, at the end of the day, I'm still going to fork out the money because yeah. I enjoy it so much. It's my pa it's it's passion, right? Um, mm -hmm. I don't like like to use that term uh, loosely. So uh, I have my gun, which seven grand out of the box, but then you add all the additional pieces that I've added to it. Mm -hmm. I've changed out the mechanical trigger for an electronic trigger added mm -hmm. butt plates you know so you're talking 10 grand for my rifle mm -hmm. that's just the 22 you're talking a couple of grand for my air rifle uh you're talking 1500 dollars for a suit that you replace every every few years um almost like 300 over 300 dollars for a pair of boots mm -hmm. uh the the pro mat that i use you can get much cheaper versions okay mm -hmm. so like that i'm what I do, what I have, uh, like $300 for an off hand stand, uh, $300 for my pro mat. Cause I really love my cartoon pro mat is very wonderful. And, um, I have my own electronic target, a mega link, uh, because it, without it, I wouldn't train, uh, it, I would not have improved as well. So, yeah. uh, and I can use that for indoor 20 yards. I can use it for 10, 10 meters and I can use it for 50 meters. Uh, so that's, you know, three grand there over that probably. Um, and I have the scat trainer, which is, you know, a couple grand as well. So, uh, but that has also been a really integral part of my training. Um, mm -hmm. because on the computer screen, I can see my approach. I can see my follow through. I can yeah. see, um, my holds and, uh, it's made a world of difference in, in that. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And I didn't you, add that up. <laughs> <laughs> and you did indicate that it's you ammo, ammo costs. Oh, right. Um, I didn't even mention ongoing, that. But, ongoing investment right there. <laughs> but the yeah. biggest investment is your time and energy. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Right. Cool. Okay. Okay. So that's all for the questions. Oh, ah, well. <laughs> Okay, so why don't we turn it over to Regina. Yay, so <laughs> we're going to get some prices now. Um, the, we get Shannon social medias. Um, oh, no we, no, we didn't, but um, why don't, we, we, why don't to, we give away some prizes and then we'll catch up And then we'll then. do that. Yeah, we're, I'm going to give okay, you a bit. Thank good. you. Um, so Casey, let's go ahead and do the sh sh t shirt. Okay, I have a count. Hold on a second. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. Okay, <laughs> while she's doing that, Shannon, <laughs> if people have questions or if they want to get a hold of you, can they get through? How can they get a hold of you? Can you, they get a hold of you through um, the Shooting Federation? Send an email to you there, or do you have? 
social media? That's a great that... question. I what? do have social media, but I don't, I, I, let me see. Like I have Twitter, but that was more for like when I was doing my master's of education, that was, <laughs> I don't really, I have LinkedIn, but that's more of a work thing. Yeah. Uh, I don't really have a sport like piece. So um, you can message me on Facebook because it's not like I have a pseudo name on there. That's yeah. it's pretty easy my face and my son uh, <laughs> uh, there um so i guess that's that's a good way to do it uh, yeah. uh yeah i have instagram but i'm not very i'm not active on that very much either so i yeah <laughs> okay. i'm not great at this whole social media thing <laughs> okay not all of us are yeah. <laughs> all right so i have my names now we're all ready okay. you good so Perfect. yes for the She Shoots t-shirt, we have uh, Maria. Awesome. Yay. Congratulations. Um, so, okay. but Maria's going, Maria's been commenting. She's on YouTube, so. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, since you're on YouTube, I will have to get you to contact me at Casey at ladyguns.ca um, because YouTube does not have the function that allows me to speak to you um, on uh, YouTube. So, um, okay. So the next one is the Cusip Prize Pack, and mm -hmm. that is Kathy Wolf. Hey, congratulations. Yeah. And I have your email already, so we'll get <laughs> yeah, Exactly. <laughs> right? Kathy's going to be your next guest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, finally, we have the Canada First uh, prize pack, and that goes to um, 1AB. Well, 1AB says, if you pick my name for a prize, can you please give it to Shannon's son? Oh, we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty awesome. Perfect. That's a few more lines down. I didn't even see it. Yeah, yeah I didn't even see it until you mentioned it, Kelly. Yeah. Okay. okay. Awesome. Right. Well, congratulations to all our winners. And uh, yeah, hopefully you all enjoy them. Um, so with that, uh, let's uh, move on to our upcoming events. Uh, so December is the month of giving and the CUSF is doing a Christmas giveaway. Uh, rules are very simple. Uh, dollar donated means a uh, one entry so the more you donate the more entries you will have into the giveaway uh contents runs from november 13th so start yesterday and it runs all the way to december 15th and the winner will be drawn on december 15th uh winner will get tons of cool prizes including as a prize farm i don't even know what it is myself and it's all courtesy to stoker canada so thank you so much stoker okay. For your donate for your prices for the giveaway um if you want to donate and participate in the in the christmas giveaway you can go to cusf.ca to donate or if you're on instagram and you follow the Canadian university shooting federation instagram page the link will be on the bio as well so best of luck and thank you for anyone who donates um also, we're always looking for volunteers at the CUSF. If you're interested in volunteering, send us an email at submissions at cusf.ca. And also, if you're a university student that would be interested in creating their own university club, sorry, I'm not bringing... <laughs> there, <laughs> another one. Apparently, I can't talk today. Uh, also, send us an email at submissions at cusf.ca and we'll get you get a club set up at your university. So that's enough for me today, apparently. Uh, Kelly. <laughs> so Project Maple Cedar events for 2023 are complete. So currently right now we are planning our 2024 season. Um, if you do want to reach out to us, you can send us an email at info at maplecedarrifleman.com. Uh, if your club is interested in hosting an event, again, we're regionally run. So all across on uh, all, I was just going to say all across Ontario, all across the country, uh, just reach out to us and we'll put you in contact with the um, the coordinators in the various provinces. Uh, but Ontario, we're going to be having winter seeds coming up soon. So there's mm. a couple of there's a couple of ranges, uh, one that's out, I think one that Shannon mentioned just tonight 
in Hamilton, Kitchener, <laughs> that's interested in shooting in January outside, three positional shooting, sitting on the ground. <laughs> yeah. oh. So we're going to be doing winter seeds. We have special patches for that as well. So only a few people have gotten them so far. Uh, Rocky fingers. Put us in contact or get in contact with us and we'll let you know what's going to be happening. Go to mapleseedrifleman.com. You can look at the website for any upcoming events. 2024, obviously, we're going to have uh, QCIF events uh, in the various uh, regions too. Uh, so if you are a QCIF member, please watch out for those. Okay. And yeah, that's it. What about Lady Guns? Casey, do you want to let us in on what's happening with that? We actually, we don't have anything going on right now, but Deneen has finally gotten clearance from the doctor. She's allowed to shoot again. <laughs> That's awesome. So as she works her way back up, she'll she'll probably be accepting or doing a little bit more um, in, in the shooting community <laughs> now that she's actually allowed to shoot again. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, great. That's awesome. Okay, well, thank you so much again, Shannon, for joining us today. Best of luck. Definitely would love to see you shoot in the Olympics. Um, so with that, I'd like to thank again uh, Cabela's Canada Outdoor Fund, Savage Arms, Breda, Vortex, and Canada First Demo. If you like today's episode, please leave us a like and follow so you don't miss out on any of our episodes. You can watch us on YouTube and Facebook, or you can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and iHeartRadio. If you liked our message and would like to learn more about our programs, check out our our websites at cusf.ca, ladyguns.ca, and mapleseedrifleman.com. To support us and get some additional perks, check out our membership programs. Thank you all for tuning into the She Shoot podcast, episode 22, Shooting Straight to the Olympics. Make sure to join us on December 12th for episode 23 at our regular time, where we will be talking to Kathy Wolf as Kelly mentioned previously. <laughs> so make sure to keep an eye on uh, keep an eye on our social media so you can see the official uh, announcement for the next episode. So thank you all and have a good night. Good night everyone.